All right, guys, so I just wanted to have a fun conversation with you all today uh, talking about the RTX 4000 series and whether or not I believe they're decently future-proof. And I'm going to be talking more or less 4K gaming, not so much 1080p or 2K gaming because we all know that these cards pretty much squash 2K and 1080p. But 4K is where things get interesting because obviously it's higher graphical fidelity, uh, it uses more VRAM and all sorts of stuff. You know, there's a lot more that taxes the graphics card itself when you go to 4K gaming. So that's what I wanted to kind of talk about here and start a discussion with you guys down below in the comment section. Now, of course, if you guys do go on to enjoy this conversation that we're going to be having here today about the 4000 series GPUs, uh, make sure you guys leave a like on the video. Also, be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel, turn the post notification bell on, all of that fun stuff. And without further ado, let's get into the discussion. So do I think the RTX 4000 series graphics cards are going to be future-proof for at least a few years? Yes, I do. And why I believe this is because, well, there's actually a video on my channel where I tested out the GTX 1660 Super, and that card was actually running games in 4K. Is it a 4K graphics card? No, not by any means. It's meant for 1080p, of course, but the card was actually doing surprisingly well even in 4K circumstances. I was actually pretty surprised. You're not going to get the best experience on a card like that in 4K because it's not meant for that, but considering the card is as old as it is now and it doesn't have nearly as much horsepower as, say, something like the RTX 4070 Ti or 4080 or 4090, it's still impressive that that card was still even playable in 4k you know it wasn't like the games were you know running five frames per second and it was lagging all over the place now of course results will vary depending on which game you're trying to push in 4k on a card like that but the point is if a card like that could even push 4k to begin with these cards are going to be, I think, more than fine for at least six to seven years pushing 4K. You also got to take something else into consideration. Gaming doesn't really evolve as much as it used to. If you look back to the PS1, to the PS2, remember how much of a graphical difference there was? I mean, it was like night and day, you know, like it was all pixely and they looked very blocky, the characters and stuff like that on the PlayStation 1. And then you got to the PS2 and things started to look a lot more smooth, a lot less blocky, I guess you could say. And then, you know, once we moved on to the Xbox 360 and the PS3 generation, it got even better. But nowadays, I don't know if you've really noticed a pattern, but the games aren't really graphically jumping like they used to, you know? Like, you could play a game on the PS5, and it will look almost exactly the same as a game you would play on the PS4 like seven years ago, you know what I mean? I also, too, think the devs aren't really pushing these new consoles to their limits, of course, but what I'm trying to say is, is like, now that games aren't really jumping leaps and bounds graphically like they used to, I think 4K is going to kind of, you know, the graphics aren't going to evolve that much to where, like, you're going to need to upgrade all the freaking time. You know, like when the RTX 5000 series comes out, I don't think you're going to have to make the jump to it because it's like, oh my god, you know, my 4080 just can't handle 4K anymore. You know, that's not going to be the case because games just aren't jumping like they used to graphically. That's just the fact of the matter. They're not. So I easily think you could probably squeeze at least six or seven years out of these cards. Maybe not so much with the RTX 40. 70 Ti because you're kind of limited with the uh, smaller, you know, uh, bus size and then also the VRAM being 12 gigabytes and stuff like that. Miles may vary just a little bit in that type of category with that card, but if you're looking at the RTX 4080 and the RTX 4090, well, I think you're pretty much good to go. You're pretty much golden there for a little while. So, like I said, mileage will vary, of course. You know, if you have a 4070 Ti, you might be able to get away with it for a while, but, you know, that's that's the point I'm trying to make there. The 4080, 4090, you should be more than okay for at least six or seven years, if not longer than that. And that, of course, is really dependent on what type of frames you're looking to get. Like, um, I'm not saying that, you know, you're going to be good with these cards getting 120 plus frames for six to seven years. You know, obviously, things will get a little more taxing over time. Games will start to kind of, you know, they'll get a little bit more demanding as time goes on so you might be getting lesser and lesser but then again you can always push graphics down to medium high you know you don't have to run ultra on everything i mean i guess if you're spending money on a card like this that's kind of the point of that right you want to push the graphics to their limits but as time goes on if you really want to squeeze and, and stretch a lot of miles out of these cards i think you easily can you know like this 4080 i really don't think i'll have to upgrade it anytime soon uh now knowing me and how much i like to change graphics 
graphics cards, I probably will, you know. I'm still looking at 4090s like, oh, do I pull the trigger on it? I kind of want one again because I used to have one and my computer was having issues with, or my old computer was having issues with the card. It was like blue screening my computer and stuff. But on my new rig, it's more than capable. But then again, it's like, I don't really have to because the 4080 is still a very, very good card. And, um, you know, I'm getting great frames. You know, the graphical fidelity is good. I could push like, you know, high, ultra, whatever. Um, so I really don't have to, but it's more of a luxury type of purchase if I decide to. It's not a mandatory. It's not, oh my God, I have to do it because this card is just, it, it's struggling, you know? And I don't think it's going to be struggling for a very long time. And that's the point I'm trying to make here. So, um, you know, I, I think if you're a consumer that's in the graphics card market and you're somebody that upgrades all the time, well, maybe you don't have to so much. You know, the, the RTX 40 series, there's a lot of impressive stuff with the hardware. You know, you got the um, the new frame generation stuff. That's a whole new feature. And that's only exclusive to the 4000 series. And I think it's only going to get better as time goes on. I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, frame generation stuff right now because it's a little glitchy. Uh, I don't think they have all the kinks worked out of it yet. But I think as time goes on, that's also going to improve your performance too. So even if the, you know, you get to a point where the card starts to suffer, and I'm not, I'm talking like years down the line, you also got frame generation too that's also going to kind of you know bump that performance back up a little bit you know so that's the overall point i was trying to make here and that's the discussion that i wanted to have with you guys are you somebody that upgrades your graphics card like every single year or two when new ones come out let me know i know there's a lot of people even still rocking you know maybe the 1660 super or the 1660 ti you know there's a lot of people still rocking cards like that but you know maybe if you're on something like that it might be the time to upgrade now at least to the 3000 series you know i've noticed you know, there's been a lot of sales recently with the 3000 series and even buying into the used market is still pretty good. As long as you're buying from a reliable source, you kind of know what you're getting into and who you're kind of working with, then you should be totally okay in that department. But uh, just be wary of who you're buying from used. And, you know, I think you can even stretch the 3000 series cards for quite some time too. I'm not talking low end of the spectrum, like a 3050 or a 3060 or 3060 Ti, but I think if you even even settled on like say a 3080 Ti, 3090, 3090 Ti, those will even be future proof for quite some time, especially if you go like say 3090 or the 3090 Ti because you're getting 24 gigs of VRAM, which is just absolutely ridiculous considering that you don't need anywhere near that for gaming, but you might somewhere down the line, you know what I mean? So. I, I would say they're even pretty future-proof for the most part, but um, I think I'm going to wrap the conversation up here. I do want to thank everybody so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about everything that I talked about here in the video. Do you agree with, you know, the stuff I talked about? Do you disagree? Let me know your thoughts and comments down there in the comments section. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn the bell on, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Have an awesome rest of your day or night, and see you later.